Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Neelab. The topic that we are going to deal today is Electrophoretic Mobility Shift Assay or in abbreviation it is also called as EMSA. Electrophoretic Mobility Shift Assay EMSA. Okay, so this is the abbreviation. Now this is a very very popular technique in most of the labs people do this. We would be talking about different aspects of this. We would be talking about the principle of this technique. Furthermore, we would also be talking about how this technique is done. Uh, so let us start without wasting much time. So what is electrophoretic mobility shift essay? It is also called as, remember you should be knowing, apart from knowing the uh, actual principle and how a technique is done, apart from that you should also be knowing about uh, what are the other names of, of a given technique. So, other names are gel shift assay, gel mobility shift assay, band shift assay and gel retardation assay. So all of these are different names again gel shift assay, gel mobility shift assay, band shift assay and gel retardation assay. You will come to know that why uh, so much of gel and bands and everything about electrophoresis is present over here. You will come to know as we proceed in the lecture that why such names have been given to this technique. So, this technique basically it is uh, using the affinity electrophoresis. So, affinity and electrophoresis, affinity means uh, affinity or attraction towards a particular thing and electrophoresis we already know that movement in the electric field is called as electrophoresis. Okay. So, this technique is utilizing affinity and electrophoresis, affinity towards something and electrophoresis is movement in the electric field. This we already know, isn't it? What does this technique do or what principle or what is this technique used for? Let us first of all understand this. This technique is used for identifying that whether a protein and DNA fragment are interacting or not. Not only DNA, it's RNA also. That means whether a protein is interacting with nucleic acid, any nucleic acid or not. So what, what we are doing is we are trying to find out the interaction, whether any interaction is present between protein and nucleic acid. So it is a technique that tells us that whether a protein is interacting with any nucleic acid or not. How it is going to tell us this? Let us move now into the next portion of this video that how this is going to tell you that whether a protein and DNA or protein or nucleic acid is interacting or not. Understand this that suppose I ask you to carry a 10 kg, uh, a 10 kg bag on your head or on your shoulders and run. Okay, and in the next case, I ask you to uh, run without any bag on your shoulders or on your head. So there are two scenarios. Okay, so there are two scenarios. I'm asking you to understand this. There are two scenarios. In the first scenario, I am asking you to run without any bag, any 10 kg bag on your head or on your shoulder. You have to run without any 10 kg bag on your head or on your shoulder. In the second case, I am saying that you have to run with the bag. So in which case, if I ask you a question that in which case you would be able to run the farthest. I am not asking you about the speed. I am just saying that in which case you would be able to run the farthest. Suppose we are starting from here and we are starting from here in both the cases suppose this case is without the fragment suppose you are able to run uh, in this case uh, this is in this case without the bag without the bag you are able to reach up till here but suppose you start over here and run with the bag you will be able to run only up till here and you will stop why because you have excess load on yourself you would not be able to move very fast or you, you would not be able to move very far. Okay, so this is the principle. If you have understood this analogy, you would be able to understand this technique as well. So what we are saying is that the size of the DNA molecule is inversely proportional to the distance traveled by the DNA molecule. It's but natural. It is the concept of electrophoresis only. 
larger is the size of the dna molecule if if there is higher molecular weight or greater size of the dna molecule it will not be able to move very far it will move only up to uh, up till a very short distance and after that it will stop whereas if the molecular if the size of the dna is very short it will be able to move to a farther distance this we already know isn't it so the same thing or same concept is being applied over here whenever a protein is interacting with the dna suppose this is a test tube that i am having let me just draw over here suppose this is a test tube that i am having and what i am doing is i have dna fragments over here i have dna fragment over here plus i have put in some protein also protein put in some protein also okay and in this another test tube i have only dna i have only dna only dna fragments and over here dna and protein both are present now understand this that if protein is bound to the dna suppose this is the dna and i have bound it protein over it what will happen it will not be able to move forward suppose it was moving up till here and suppose it, it was moving up till here without any protein attached to it but if you attach protein it will only move up till here okay previously it was moving up till here now protein protein being attached to it it will move only up till here because it is heavy now molecular weight has increased so this is what i am saying is that whenever the protein is bound to a dna the movement of the protein plus dna is retarded it is the same analogy that i just told you over here so the movement is retarded so this case or this is the reason or this is the main concept by which we are checking that whether a dna is binding to a protein or not in other words we are checking out the specific dna binding activities through this technique specific dna binding activities that means every dna will not be able to bind to a protein or all the proteins will not be able to bind to the dna that dna fragment right so we are going to understand or we are going to check whether a particular protein or whether a particular dna is binding to a protein or not vice versa they are interacting with each other or not this is the case one thing you should understand that gel should be non denaturing over here the gel that you are using should be non denaturing why am i saying it should be non denaturing you see a denaturing gel what is a denaturing gel in which you are using the chemicals which will denature the bonds of the protein isn't it it will break basically the disulfide bonds you would be knowing that beta mercaptoethanol or beta mercaptoethanol basically what does it do it breaks the disulfide bond between the cysteine residues furthermore if you put in urea the non covalent bonds also will break down such as hydrophobic or hyd uh, or um, this hydrogen bonds they will also break down so we are not using those gels because we do not want the protein to get denatured protein will be bound only under uh, only when it is it is having a proper structure if you use a a, a a denaturing gel what will happen the protein will break into pieces break into subunits we do not want that we want to check whether the entire protein is interacting with our dna or not or dna is interacting with the protein or not so gel should be non denaturing now understand that different proteins retard the mobility differently what what does this mean suppose a protein a and protein b both are interacting suppose let us just take the example over here suppose this was the dna fragment this was the dna fragment now if i say that protein a this is protein a it is going to bind with this dna okay depending upon the size and shape of protein a the dna mobility will be retarded it is but natural this is the same way in which if i if i ask you that you have to carry a 5 kg bag on your head and move and if if you have to carry a 10 kg bag on your head and move both in both the cases the amount of distance or the distance that you that will be traveled by you would be different isn't it that is what i am saying that this is protein a and suppose i say that in in other case this was case number 1 case number 1 and if i take case number 2 over here in this case the same dna is present remember the same dna i have used and now i am checking the interaction with protein b now if protein a and protein b both have tendencies to interact with this dna 
the dna would be retarded to different extents depending upon the shape and size of the protein okay so it will be dependent different proteins depending upon the shape let me just change the color depending upon the shape and size of the proteins the retardation would be there of the dna when it is moving through the gel this you would have understood now let us move on to the next point if two proteins are bound then further reduction will take place definitely this is common sense if you have attached both two proteins if i say that i am attaching both protein a and protein b to this dna fragments definitely the movement would be further retarded than it was being retarded previously in the previous case when both uh, uh, both the proteins were not binded only one protein was binded okay so two proteins if they, if they are bound the further reduction will take place next what are the advantages of this technique this is a pretty simple technique i believe you would have understood the concept of this so this is a simple technique quick versatile and very very sensitive its sensitivity can also be increased if you have dna that is dna or nucleic acid let us say the nucleic acid that is radioactively labeled radioactively labeled radioactively labeled now if you uh, if you have this dna that is radioactively labeled then only you would be able to identify where is the dna okay so this sensitivity is increased many fold if the nucleic acid is radioactively labeled this is uh, the concept you would have understood now let us understand this with the help of a uh, diagrammatic representation look at this so let's let me just first of all uh, uh, rub this portion out So I'm talking about this particular diagram. Let us just isolate this diagram with whatever I've written. I'm talking about this diagram that I have encircled. Suppose this is the free DNA fragment. Now remember, this free DNA fragment has been radio labeled over here. There are two fragments that I am showing. Okay, there are two fragments that I am showing. These two fragments. These are free DNA fragments. That means no protein is attached over here. now let us come to this this is the this is the same dna remember this is the same dna as this was but over here the protein is binded let us just take this case in this case in the first test tube there was only dna consider that this is the this case in the second case there are dna fragments and there is protein also now suppose there are 50 dna fragments not all dna fragments would be binding with the protein definitely some of them would be binding some of them would not be binding nothing is 100% in biology isn't it suppose uh, 15 of fragments binded to the dna no, uh, other fragments did not bind to sorry 15 fragments of the dna binded to the protein other fragments did not bind to the protein you would have understood this concept isn't it so in the next case you can see that protein has binded to the dna complex in the same way in the same test tube there were certain dna that did not bind to the protein so when you run both of these now this is case number 1 this is run over here this is run over here you can see over here in the first case there is only one band this band is only present and this band is showing the free dna fragment isn't it this band is showing you the free dna fragment that means over here no protein is binded in the next case if i say in this case there are two fragments one fragment is thick another fragment is very thin the thinner fragment is showing you the protein dna complex and it is present earlier that means the migration over here is very very small as compared to the pure dna in which there was no uh, binding of the protein over here the migration is small and in the same lane there is the presence or the single uh, or, or this band which is showing free dna fragment because not all dna fragments would be binding to the protein some of them have bounded so this is showing the uh, this this band is showing the protein dna complex to the uh, uh, it is showing the dna to which the protein has bounded and this fragment or this band it is showing the free dna fragment i hope you would have understood this was very very simple technique called as emsa so this was all for uh, from my side about emsa i hope you would have understood this If you have understood please like this video and subscribe to my channel press the bell icon so that you can get the latest notification whenever a video is uploaded thank you so much and have a great day